Hey everyone, Mike B. Barnett's Remax Southern Shores here in Myrtle Beach. And today we are talking about the four reasons properties do not sell whenever they're on the market. Now, if you've ever been perplexed as to why your house just won't budge off the market, well, today you're in for a treat. We are actually going to dissect those four reasons on why and often your property struggles to find a buyer. Now, those four reasons we're going to talk about are price, condition, location, and marketing. Let's dive in. All right, so let's kick things off with the very first reason on why a property does not sell when it's on the market. And it's the most critical factor out there, your price. So whenever you go to set the asking price on your property, it's not about just setting a number based on what you want. You have to take in consideration on the similar properties around you that are currently for sale under contract and have sold recently. So let me explain. Whenever a buyer looks at properties and if they're passing on it, it means they're either passing on it because they're finding the exact same house you are offering for lesser money, or they're finding the exact same house that you are priced at, but the other house has a whole lot more features, benefits, and upgrades. Now, Buyers are comparative shoppers, which means they're looking for the best deal for them. They're looking for the lowest price and offers the most amount of features or upgrades. All right, if we take a look at this example, both of these houses are five bedrooms, three full baths in the same neighborhood and around the same square footage but look at the prices. One is $374.9 and the other is $399.9. The buyer is going to pick the $374.9 every single time because it's the exact same property for lesser money. Uh, so that's why you want to price your property competitively to your competition in order for the buyer to see the best value in your property. Now, if the reason your property is not selling is because of price, it's a simple adjustment. You take a look at the market around you and then you adjust the price down to where it needs to be to be competitive versus the other properties that the buyers are buying on over yours. Moving on to the second hurdle on why your property fails to sell and that is the condition of your property so when it comes to the appearance or the condition of your property uh, we tend to have a lot of pride on there's nothing wrong with our house but when it comes to selling your property to another buyer that might be a little different so when we talk about the condition there's three things you want to look at and that is the repairs needed on your house, upgrades or the lack of upgrades, as well as the layout of your house. So in today's market, a lot of buyers are looking for that move-in ready home. And, you know, a buyer just doesn't want to turn around and have to make a lot of repairs or have to upgrade an entire house which could be a major deterrent on buying your property. Now, a perfect example of a property that needs repairs or upgrades is in these videos because I took this video of a property that basically was a near hoarder situation and a lot of buyers just don't want to have to deal with all the repairs and upgrades that are needed on this type of property. Example of a property that has upgrades and another one that lacks these upgrades are two properties, for instance, if you take the kitchen 
in this video it shows granite countertops oak cabinets are in great condition uh, and a backsplash where if you take a look at the other kitchen it lacks everything that this other kitchen has a lot of buyers would prefer an upgraded kitchen over having to replace kitchen cabinets granite countertops you know stuff of that nature so what do you do to overcome the condition issue on why your property doesn't sell so here's a couple of ideas number one fix the repair all right. If you fix the repairs, then the buyers won't be passing on your property. Uh, if you have a lack of upgrades, then you can decide to do those upgrades, which we never really tend to recommend just because of the cost involved. But if you want to do that, then you can do that and sell the property. But you'll probably want to adjust the price rather than spend the money on the upgrades. Third thing is the layout. You can't really do anything about the layout of the property or you know, the boxiness of a house uh, or the lack of open concept. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to adjust your price to a point where a buyer sees more value in your property over your competition who has an open concept or a first floor master bedroom. Now, let's talk about the third reason your property fails to sell when it's on the market, and that is your location. So if your house is located on a busy road, let's say, or if it backs up to a school or a business, or the backyard just has a very undesirable view, or you could be located 20, 30 minutes away from grocery stores, hospitals, you know, anything else in between, then you might have a location issue. When it comes to being located uh, that's, you know, backed up to a school or maybe a business, then that is going to be a big eyesore because during the day you're going to have people, kids at the school, employees at the business, in and out of the property, and then it's just, it's not going to be a quaint setting for the buyer. So that is going to be an issue and could be a deal breaker for the buyer. So when you take a look at the location issues of your property, you have to look at the drawbacks because that is what the buyers are looking at. If you take, for instance, the busy road, if your property is located on the busy road, then the buyer is going to probably make that a deal breaker because they don't want to deal with the traffic coming in and out of their property or the noise that they have to endure every single day of living on this busy road. Or if they have children, then it becomes a safety issue of being on the road. Now, if your property backs up to a school or a business of some kind, then that's more of an eyesore, which a lot of buyers tend to not want to look at. Uh, they want to look at more of a serene setting outside their backyard. But if they're looking at a big brick building or a school, then they have to deal with the the kids coming and going, the teachers, the cars, and even probably the intercom. And if it's a business, then they have to deal with employees, commercial trucks coming and going. So it's not really something a lot of buyers would like. Now, let's talk about the backyard views, okay? If, for instance, your property backs right up to the window of your neighbor's yard, a lot of buyers don't really want to look at that. Again, this goes back to the serene setting. You know, they don't want to have to walk out their backyard and look immediately at their neighbor. When you look at the vicinity of your property to, you know, grocery stores, shopping, restaurants, hospitals, if you are 20, 30 minutes away, then you might 
have an issue on trying to get a buyer to buy, especially if someone is looking for something close to these uh, businesses. Now, what you want to do is you want to take a look at this and see what you can do to accentuate your property in other places. For instance, if there's a way to block the business or the school outside your backyard, then what I would do is I would look at planting trees or giving a credit to the buyer to plant these trees. If you can't deal with or you can't figure out a way to overcome the location issue, then the only thing you can do is adjust your price down so the buyer can see enough value in your property that they'll buy it rather than passing on it. Lastly, let's go over the final reason why a property fails to sell and that is from marketing. Now, I'm gonna put real estate agents on the spot right now because if it's because of marketing, that falls on the listing agent. So your property might be facing challenges due to inadequate marketing efforts. This could range from inaccurate information to missing information in the listing, lacking professional photography, the agent just isn't being proactive in selling the property, or even a lackluster description. So let's take a look at some examples of these five that I just gave. When it comes to inaccurate information, I have actually walked into a house where it was a four bedroom, but the last listing said it was three bedrooms. This is just an egregious mistake on this listing agent that it's only a three bedroom in the listing. Missing information. So I've walked into a property before that said nothing about the property being located on a golf course, which missed that feature. And this property was actually located on a double fairway of a golf course, which is a huge selling point to uh, golfers that want to live on the golf course. A lackluster description. So when it comes to the lackluster description, um, I've seen a $3 million oceanfront house with only four sentences describing the property. And two of the sentences were actually just about the area. This is a $3 million oceanfront house. This should be a novel describing all the features and upgrades in this property, and it was only four. When you talk about the professional photography, so that is the very first thing buyers look at. And if you have poor listing pictures, buyers will pass it over immediately. I've seen listing pictures where it was clearly from a cell phone and they took it from the car from the street, meaning they rolled down the window, took a picture, and the actual car window was in the picture. I've seen a thumb in the picture. I've seen a kid running around in a picture. I've seen the listing agent in the bathroom mirror taking the picture. Um, I've seen pictures that look almost completely dark, okay? Uh, this is the first place you have to start as a listing agent is professional photography. Now, when it comes to agents just not actively or proactively trying to sell your property, it's because of lack of experience. Whenever they put a property on the market, a lot of agents just tend to not know what to do next. You know, they put in the MLS and then they put a sign in the yard and then they just wait and wait and wait and pray that a buyer comes along. See, what you need to do is basically you gotta figure out how do we get this property sold and then we turn around and we make phone calls, we send postcards, we send emails to other agents, and we proactively try and sell your property. Well, there you have it. 
the four reasons why a property fails to sell and why a buyer doesn't buy it. Price, condition, location, and marketing. I know it's a delicate dance, but hiring the right real estate professional can get you through these four gauntlets and get you to the closing table very easily. Folks, that's all I got this week. If you got any questions or comments, drop them down below in the comment section. And also, if you like what I shared today, give me a thumbs up. And if you're looking for more real estate wisdom, subscribe to my channel and get ready for my next video. Best of luck with your home selling journey. And until next time, see you guys on Bieber Friday. Have a good one.